Hi everybody, in this episode I'm going to be showing how to do basic editing. Just getting things from the source monitor, actually from the uh, project window up to the source monitor and then down to your timeline uh, for basic editing. In future episodes we'll be going through the toolbar that really relates to the timeline and how to edit things in the timeline. But right now we're going to go through basic editing. And for basic editing, I would recommend using uh, assembly mode up here. If you go up to the assembly, right now we're under the editing workspace. If you click on assembly, it's going to arrange it in kind of a different way. And one thing to note here that when we go to editing, we can see both the source monitor and the program monitor all on the same screen. As we hit assembly, that kind of seems to disappear. We've got the program up here. But if you notice, we also have the source up here. This space up here is shared for the... So is shared with the source monitor and the program monitor. It gives you a little bit more room for kind of viewing clips over here and to do some quick editing. One thing I should recommend before we actually start editing is if you have a secondary monitor, if you are plugged into a secondary monitor, and two monitors basically for your computer, then what you can do is you can go up to edit and under preferences and go down to playback, you'll be able to play back your second, secondary monitor full screen. Right now I do not have them attached, so they're not showing under here. If you have a secondary monitor plugged in, it will show up here. This uh, WDV is basically uh, previewing through a, like a DV device, an ancient uh, old antiquated um, DV camera or something like that, or a, or a DV deck or something like that. It will send that video signal through that as you're playing back as you're playing back on your timeline. But you should be able to check mark your monitor here, your secondary monitor. You'll be able to check mark that and hit OK, and it will preview your program monitor and actually your source monitor as well. Whenever you load a clip into your source monitor or into your program monitor, it will play it back full screen to your secondary monitor device, which is uh, actually pretty nice. So. Let's show a few different ways of loading a clip into the source monitor for basic editing. I'm going to go down under scene 4 here. I'm going to alt double click or option double click on this folder. It will open it up. If this is not showing icon mode, you can go down here and click on icon view and it will show things as icons. I'm going to pull and make these a little bit bigger. I'm going to slide this up here and make this a little bit bigger so you can kind of see the clips that we've got here. And there's a few things you can do to kind of select your clip. First of all, you can just simply select the clip here and if you hit shift O, as in shift open, it will open it up in your source monitor. Keep in mind this is not your program monitor. Your program monitor is showing what is in your timeline. Right now this is the source monitor. The source monitor is basically a clip viewer and a basic editor. It's, you're able to set in and out points on your clips. So a couple ways of loading a clip into your source monitor. You can simply move your mouse over one of these windows here. And uh, notice what happens as we move our mouse back and forth. Of course, we showed earlier that this scrubs through the clip. You can see that little black line there going from the beginning to the edit and to the end of the clip there. So you can skim this back and forth like that. And then when you find a, a frame that you like, you can double click on it. And it will load it on that exact frame right there. So it's kind of loaded in the middle of the clip right there. Otherwise, if you just select a clip and hit Shift-O, it will also load it as well. So if you want to load it at the beginning of the clip, you'll select the clip, you'll scrub it back to the beginning of the clip, hit shift O, and it loads the clip in the monitor. So a couple different ways to load it in the source monitor, either double clicking or selecting the clip and hitting shift O. And at this point, you can either arrow through these clips like this. I'm hitting uh, arrow left and right to move through these or arrows up and down to select these clips. And once again, shift O will load it into the monitor. And when I say O, I'm not talking about the number O, I'm talking about the number zero. I'm talking about the letter O, as in shift O for open. So let's go to this beginning clip, hit shift O, load it in the source monitor. Once you have a clip in the source monitor, you can use your letters J, K, and L to navigate through the clip. You hit J, it rewinds. And if you hit J again, it goes faster and faster and faster as you hit it more and more and more. If you hit J, 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 it'll keep going faster and faster until it gets to kind of the, the max speed. If I hit L, it goes forward, first time at 100% speed, and then you hit it again like it's, I think it's 150, then 200, then 300, and keeps on going faster and faster. And if you hit K, it stops. So if you're trying to look for a portion for this clip to be edited here, I'm just going to grab my playhead and kind of pull it back toward the beginning of the clip here. I'm going to find out where I want the clip to begin right here after the action is yelled. I'm going to, I want this to start right there. When I put it down the timeline, I want to get rid of all this footage beforehand and start it right there. Uh, you can use these two little items down here, in and out point. But if you hit those, if you click on those, it'll hit set an in point and out point. But I'm going to do it with my shortcut, which is I and O. I for in point, O for out point. If I hit I, it sets an in point. And then I press spacebar or L. Hey man, got a house to myself, want to party.
and I hit my spacebar to pause. That's where I want my clip to end. I hit O for out point. And now that I've got this little section selected here, and I want, I've edited this down to this end point and out point, I want to put it into my timeline. So there's a couple ways of doing this. You can grab this clip right here and drag it and drop it down into your timeline. Now notice, uh, now you got to be kind of careful where you put this. Right now I'm going to put it on my V1 track and my A1 track. If you put it up like that, it's going to put it on your V2 and A2. But if I drag it down in the middle here and let go, it drops it on my timeline. I'm going to hit my slash above my enter key to show the entire timeline. It zooms out and I've done my edit here. So I've got this clip down on my timeline. First clip. Hey man, got a house to myself. Want to party. There we go. Now there's also a shortcut for that. Let's show you a couple other ways of bringing down a clip here. I, I deleted that clip out of there. But notice you've got these little two icons right here. First of all, this is your video icon. This is your audio icon. If this shows up as a solid, that means you have video. And if this shows up as solid, you have audio as well. If you load a clip that doesn't have audio on it, this will be grayed out and you won't be able to use it. And same with the video here. But you can simply grab this video icon right here and you can drag it down and drop it in your timeline and notice it just brings the video down into your timeline. Notice when I click into the timeline, look what happens. It pops over to the program monitor. Now it is showing what is in my timeline. This is the assembly mode layout. Just keep in mind your source monitor is to the right, your program monitor is to your left. So if I go back to my source here, I'm going to delete this out of my timeline and I'm still in my source here. I'm going to grab my audio and I drag and drop that down here. Notice it just brings the audio and not the video. Let's talk about these little two icons right here. You've got insert and override. We'll be kind of delving into these a little bit deep here in a moment. But right now I want to show the basics of this. What these do is it basically it takes this clip and lays it to your timeline exactly where your playhead is. I'm going to get this back to my beginning of my timeline. By the way, if you hit home, it drops back to the beginning of your timeline. One more thing that I want to cover in the uh, source monitor here is ways to kind of navigate. I mentioned JKL. I want to talk about shortcuts Shift I and Shift O. If you're trying to go to your endpoint, if you want your playhead to go to your endpoint, to the endpoint on this timeline, you hit Shift I. Notice it jumps to the endpoint of the clip. If you hit Shift O, it jumps to the out point of the clip. If you hit the key Home, it jumps to the beginning of the clip. If you hit the the key End, it jumps to the end of the clip. Right now I'm going to hit shift I, jump to my endpoint, and let's say I want to trim this a little bit. Say I want like a couple more frames added to this, or maybe like five frames, kind of a playback, kind of a pre-roll of uh, five frames. What you can do is while you're in your source monitor, on your numpad, this is very important, on the actual numpad, not on the, the number keys above uh, on the very top, but on your actual numpad, if you hit the minus or plus key, watch what happens. I hit minus, it all of a sudden brings up a minus in your time code window over here. And then right afterwards, you can type in something like five and hit enter on your numpad once again, and it jumps back five frames from where your playhead was initially. Now if I want a new endpoint, I can hit I, and it resets that endpoint and puts it back to that, to the negative five frames, to five frames previous to what I, brings my endpoint and my playhead back negative five frames from, from where I initially started here. Now if you want to go forward five frames, you hit the plus key and type in five, and it jumps five frames forward. Okay, say you want to go back one full second. You can hit minus one for one second, but now if I just hit enter, it's going to go one frame back, so what I can do is hit a period on my numpad and it, and that is a placeholder for the zero zero on the frames. You hit enter and that jump back one second. Same forward plus let's go forward like three seconds. Three period is going to draw uh, is going to jump three seconds forward. Hit enter and it jumps three seconds forward. So just some quick ways of navigating in your uh, source monitor and this also works in your timeline here. So I'm going to hit shift I jump to my endpoint and let's play through this. Hey man. Okay, and that starts out pretty well. It's got a little bit of pre-roll. Now if we want to drop that into our timeline here, another way of dropping that into our timeline is by hitting the shortcuts for insert and overwrite. Insert is comma, overwrite is period. Now if I hit comma right now, since there's nothing in my timeline, it won't matter if I hit period or comma, but let me hit comma here and look what it does. It drops that in point and out point into my timeline. And now it has switched to my program monitor, which is viewing my timeline. But notice my playhead is at the end, so right now it's blank. So if I want to look at what I did, I'm going to hit Shift 3 to jump to my timeline, to highlight my timeline, hit Home, and press my spacebar hey to play. i got a house to myself. Want to party. 
So let's quickly do another edit. That was on kind of the wider shot right there. Let's cut to a close up. I'm going to double click on this clip, load it in the monitor, and let's find the kind of that same portion where he says the same line here. So this is the close up version of what we just saw here with the medium shot. So I'm going to find right when he finishes his line here. Myself want to party. Right there, I put my endpoint, press my spacebar, and he says send and leans back. Grabs his newspaper or magazine. I'm going to hit out point. Now I'm going to drop that in. Notice my playhead is right here. I'm going to hit comma and it drops that clip in right afterwards, right where my playhead is. I'm going to hit shift three I'm to go to my timeline, minus a couple times, minus once to uh, hit minus on the top of my keyboard to zoom out a little bit. I'm going to hit home and press play to see what I've done here. A man got a house to myself, want to party. Send. Oh. And there we go. And it cuts to the next shot. All right, so let's do another little edit here. I'm going to go over, actually, let's get in my timeline here. I'm going to hit end and go to the end of my timeline. Let's cut back to the wide shot here. I'm going to double click on the wide shot and uh, find kind of the same part where he leans back, picks up his magazine, and we're cutting back to the wide shot. So let's find a matching point here. And right here, he starts turning the page. So I'm going to find this turning the page clip to match here. Maybe right about there. Put an endpoint, I. Press play. And out point. And I'm going to hit my comma or my period to drop it in. First of all, I, and now that this is down my timeline, let's say I want to preview this edit right here. You can hit shift K. Shift K is a shortcut to preview and edit. It'll jump back to the previous edit and it will play through the edit to preview the edit. And then it will stop and it will take the playhead back exactly where it was. But once again, Shift K, right when you perform the edit, if you hit Shift K, it will go back and preview the edit by a like, pre-roll of, I believe, about like two or three seconds. A couple things I want you to notice down on the timeline here that you need to know about is uh, these items right here. This is your source patching right here on the, on the left-hand side. Uh, first of all, this item and this item reflects the clip that is loaded in the source monitor. So whatever is in the source monitor, it's saying this has a video channel and an audio channel. If it has more audio channels, then you'll see more of these highlighted, but right now it's just got one video channel, one audio channel. And this will tell it where to edit when you hit your comma or your period. Say you want to go on the top timeline. If you want to do some kind of B-roll editing on the top of the timeline here, and you want to take your audio channel down, I'm just clicking on these here to go to video channel one, video channel two, and watch what happens. Let's move this back a little bit. Now this is something kind of important. When we hit comma or period, that is going to be comma is going to be an insert edit. Period is going to be an overwrite. Watch the difference here. As I hit comma, look what happens. It splits that clip. And notice I've got the B1 selected up here and the A1 selected there. It puts it up here and down there, but it splits this clip here and shoves everything else down. That's an insert edit. I'm going to undo that. And as I hit period, that is an overwrite. Notice it leaves those clips alone. It does not split the clip and shove everything down. That is an overwrite. An insert shoves it in, in wherever your playhead is, and an overwrite just overwrites. Now watch this. It overwrites on this V1 channel here. I'm going to undo. I'm going to put it down here and right there. And now when I hit period, it eats into this clip here. It eats into everything here until it reaches the end of the out point that was in your source monitor here. I'm going to undo. Now watch what happens as I do an insert edit. I'm going to arrow up and jump to this previous edit right there. Right there, I'm on the exact edit right there. I hit comma. It inserts it and shoves everything else down. Instead of overwriting and eating over everything, it shoves everything else down and inserts it right there. Now also what you've got here is, uh, this is called track targeting. As you turn these on, this is basically activating these tracks here. We're going to talk about this more in, in another episode when we talk about copying and pasting within your timeline. But if these tracks aren't active, it won't be able to write to these. So make sure that they're, they're active and make sure that you have your source patching on for this clip as well. But this is basically, kind of think of this as activating a track. It's not necessarily locking it, but when you're doing copying and pasting of clips within a timeline, it's important to know how these work and we'll talk about those later. But right now, this is the most important thing right here. There's a source patching for your clip up in your source monitor uh, and telling it where to edit these items as you drop them into your timeline. 
So let me kind of start over here. I'm going to select all Control A or Command A on a Mac and delete everything. I'm going to go to the beginning of the timeline. You can hit home to go to the beginning of the timeline. Once again, now this is the process here. Notice we are on the program monitor, which is showing our movie edit. Our source is what shows these clips that we double clip on. And click on it. I'm going to get this to the beginning of the clip here. I'm going to double click. Uh, notice I've already got my endpoint and outpoint set on there. To clear in and out points, you can either right click on it and you can clear your in, your out, or clear both of them. The shortcut to clear both of them on a PC is Control Shift X. It'll clear those in and out points, and on a Mac it is Option X, and it will clear your in and out points. So I'm going to play through my clip here. And action. There's action, in point. Hey man, got a house to myself. Stop there, out point, period, to drop it in. Either comma or period at this point is fine, and it drops that clip. So this is the process here. You simply double click, in point, out point, period. Double click, in point, out point, period. But right now I've got these, I've already got my uh, in and out point selected on this. So I'm going to do control shift X, find my matching point. Action. So down here on my timeline. Hey man, got a house to myself. He says, hey man, got a house to myself. I'm gonna arrow down, make sure I'm at the end of the timeline here. Go back to my source monitor. Action. Hey man, got a house to myself. In point. Want to party. Sith. Out point, period. Go back to my wide shot. Control shift X to clear, or option X to clear my in and out points. And as he's sitting back, I'm gonna find a matching point. In point. Out point, period. And then I'm going to hit home, play through my clip, Hey and watch man, it. got a house to myself, want to party, send. And those don't exactly match, but I've got the exact clips down in here that I kind of want. And in a future episode, after we go through the toolbar, we'll start talking about editing, about trimming clips in your timeline. So if you have any questions, please post them and I'll try to get back with you. Thank you very much.